In the 1950s, in the early 1950s, there were a number of civil protests in the United States against these Jim Crow laws. In 1954, finally, the U.S. Supreme Court decided that it would review the Plessy versus Ferguson decision. And the, the doctrine of Plessy versus Ferguson, I think I can erase this now, yes? The doctrine of Plessy was that of separate but equal. In other words, when the Supreme Court decided Plessy, it said the races can be kept separate, but the facilities should be equal. Everyone knew that the facilities were not equal. But it wasn't until 1954, in the very famous case of Brown versus Board of Education, that the Supreme Court held that separate but unequal was unconstitutional. You could not have separate educational facilities, and that's what the case was about. You could not have separate public education facilities and say they were equal. They are inherently unequal. Why? Because the message being sent to black children was that they were not as equal, they were not as good as white children. And that the court finally decided, finally decided, almost 100 years after the 14th Amendment, is against the Constitution. So you have this decision in 1954, and then another very important event in the civil rights era in the United States occurred in 1955 in Montgomery, Alabama, when a woman by the name of Rosa Parks you have heard of Rosa Parks, decided she was not going to give up her seat to a white person when she was told to by the bus driver. Now, I don't know if you understand, the buses in Alabama were arranged so that the front of the bus was for white people, the back of the bus was for black people, and then there was a little area in between called no man's land where first come, first served. If you get there first and you're black, you can sit there. Well, Mrs. Parks was in no man's land. She wasn't even in the white section. She was in no man's land. But the problem was that she was a black woman who was seated and there was a white person who was standing. So she was told she had to get up and move to the back of the bus and stand. And she refused and she was arrested. And then she was defended. Well, first of all, what happened was there was a major boycott of all the public buses in Montgomery, Alabama. That boycott, as you know, was led by the Reverend Martin Luther King, Jr. That was the first time that he was in the public spotlight. He was very young. He was only about 29 years old. He died when he was 39. He was very young. But he led that boycott, which as you know was successful. And indeed, by the time the, the bus company agreed to change its rules, the Supreme Court had gone on to decide that segregated buses were unconstitutional. Okay. In addition to the Montgomery bus boycott and the 1954 decision, there was a group of students um, you have heard perhaps of Stokely Carmichael, uh, who, is, uh, who when he, by the time he had died had changed his name to Kwame Touré after Kwame Nkrumah and Sekou Touré. Um, he was one of the students that formed an organization called the, the Students for Nonviolating, Nonviol no, <laughs> Students for Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, which was... Now, Dr. King's organization, as you know, was SCLC, the, S the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, ministers, church people. The student organization, SNCC, was organized in the early 1960s, and they sat in at lunch counters, 
They were attacked. They were called names. They had food put on their heads. They were beaten. They were dragged away from these lunch counters. Why did they sit in? Because the lunch counters would not serve black people. Now this is in the 1960s in the United States of America. You were a black person. You could not be served at a five and ten cent store lunch counter. So they protested that. They went to jail. Many of them went to jail. But all of that pushed this civil rights era. And then getting into the 1960s, still in the civil rights era, the, ne era, the next crucial event actually was the election of John F. Kennedy as president in the early part of the 60s. And then his assassination in 1963. Well, why was that significant? <laughs> as far as equal protection and affirmative action. Well, that was significant because his successor, Lyndon Baines Johnson, who was his vice president, was the one who pushed for civil rights legislation because President Kennedy died before he was able to see that there was civil rights legislation passed. And so after his death, President Johnson was the, the main force behind the Civil Rights Act of 1964. A very important piece of legislation in the United States. That act prohibited discrimination in a number of areas. In public education, of course, we had the Brown decision. But beyond that, public accommodations, so hotels, restaurants of a certain size. It also prohibited discrimination in private employment. And it prohibited discrimination in federal contracting and in any federally funded program. This was perhaps the most significant piece of legislation, certainly in my lifetime. Certainly in my lifetime. The second most important piece of, of, of civil rights legislation after this one was the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Both of them spurred by Lyndon Johnson. Now the thing to remember about Lyndon Johnson was that he was a senator before he was president. He was probably one of the most effective legislators that the U.S. Senate has seen. And that was demonstrated in the passage of these two acts. The fact that he, a southerner, sponsored those two pieces of legislation had a great deal to do with the fact that they were passed because otherwise they would not have been. It was also President Johnson who was responsible for the naming of the first black Supreme Court Justice, Thurgood Marshall. Thurgood Marshall was the, the one who was the brains behind the Brown versus Board of Education decision in 1954. So if you have any questions, by the way, please stop me as I, as I go along. So we are now, let's see, in a civil rights era, era with the uh, Civil Rights Act of 64 and the Voting Rights Act of 60, and the Voting Rights Act of 1965 was the act that was crucial for the change of the face of legislators, legislatures both federal and state in the United States. Before that, you would have places in Mississippi where black people constituted 75 percent of those who could vote and there had never been a black person elected to an office. Why? Because black people couldn't register. A black person would go to register and they would be given a test that nobody in the world could pass and if they could pass then there would be something else that would be thrown in their face. There were all kinds of devices used to prevent black people from voting. For example, your grandfather had to be able to vote. Well, if, you, if your grandfather was a slave, obviously you can't vote. Okay. All kinds of tactics like that, poll taxes, you have to pay money in order to vote. Black people would have to pay money, white people would not have to pay money. This was reality in the United States for years and years and years. Remember, we have the first settlement, the first colony was settled in 1607 in Jamestown, Virginia. 
first slaves were brought over in 1619. First African slaves. Okay. Now, initially those slaves were treated like indentured servants. They were treated like whites. They were servants for a number of years. But by the 1680s, they were slaves for life. They were servants for life. And you understand what slavery meant, huh? It meant that you could be sold like a piece of furniture. You could be given away. Your children could be taken from you. That's what slavery meant. So we have a country where this institution lasted for over, well over 200 years before you had the Civil Rights Acts or, and indeed the, the, the Civil War Amendments. But even for almost another 100 years after that with Jim Crow laws separating blacks from whites. So this is a very, very long history. It's a very, very long culture of discrimination and oppression. Okay. So that ends the civil rights era, and we're now into the federal affirmative action efforts. Those efforts actually date 